Let's create the labels of a radio bar chart in Chart.js 4. So to add these labels, what we have to do is we have to go down here and we have to create a custom plugin. And I already have here the code for this entire item except for the custom plugin. And if you want to know how to create a radio bar chart, I have a special video or separate video for that. So in here, um, we're going to say here after the options, comma, plugins, bracket, and then we can say here labels, radio bar. All right, let's copy this and create now our custom plugin constant. This uh, we'll say here ID equals that comma, and then we say here before data sets draw. So before we draw the data set, we want to draw this chart args plugin options. Then we're going to say here object destructuring. If you don't know what object destructuring is, please check out my other video on the setting chart here as object destructuring. Go to your CTX, we might need the data, and maybe I'm not certain if we need the scales. I think not. But anyway, just put it in there and we can always remove it afterwards. So once we have this, what I want to do here is first of all ctx.save to save all variables above, and then we're going to put in the uh, font design. So I say here ctx.font, and this will be, let's make this a bold font. 12 pixels and I'm going to say here uh, sans serif as font family which is the default charge as font next uh, we're going to say here the color ctx.font and we can just say here for now I'll just make it black later on we'll just grab the official colors here once we did this we're going to start to draw the item and how to draw them well basically you're going to say ctx. oh and I can see here this is a mistake fill style because that's the font color so then we're going to say yeah, fill font or uh, fill text. That's the one. And then we have here the text. This is the text. Then we have here the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. So this one is slightly slightly tricky. So how do we get these coordinates? Well, we have to calculate basically from the center going up because we get the coordinates of the center. How do we get these? Well, let's start to work on this. So we have here the text. This is just the default text right now. Later on, we're going to soft code that. I want to get the x coordinate. And the x coordinate should be basically here. To do this, I'm going to comment this out for now, and we're going to use a item in uh, console.log. I'm going to use a special built-in function it's called chart dot get data set meta index and let's say index zero. Remember, we have three data sets here. So this is the first one. If I save this, refresh, open up the developer tab, and we get a lot of information here. So we can click on this and we see here, this is um, the information, 108. And then we can see here the controller and then we get a few information here, the inner radius and the outer radius. Uh, there you are. The difference between the two will indicate the pixels in width or the height or the width of the bar or the thickness, bar thickness. So that is number one. Secondly, what I need is we go into the data, and in the data we get here the x and y coordinates. Uh, let's see if we can find them. Uh, not in here. Data, I guess here, sorry, that's in this one. Index 0, and then we get here the x and y coordinates. This is identical for all in the center, because it's calculated based on the circle of the circle, so it's in the center. Starting point, and then we have to basically cal calculate going up. So this will be very important for us. So what I want to do first, let's get the width. So we know exactly how we get the center of it. So this is very important. So we're going to say here, uh, constant, and let's give this a constant here, a constant uh, outer radius. This should be outer radius. And that will be equal to chart. How do we get there, chart? Uh, data set meta and then we're going to say here controller dot outer radius so once we did this we can do the same for the inner radius exactly the same say here inner inner and then we're going to calculate of course the constant would be the width or thickness of that bar so the width will be d 
highest value minus the lowest value. So in the outer radius is a higher value compared to the inner radius. So we will say outer minus inner radius. Doing that, we get a console log, and then we can see here what is the width. We can just hide this, say refresh. All right, so as you can see here, we're getting uh, some information here. I'm going to remove this quickly. All right, so now we're not being distracted by any other number except for the width of this specific area that we calculated. That's this one here. So we know already the width here. So what I want to do now is we need to know the x coordinate. Where is our starting point here going up? Well, or sorry, going from left to right because x coordinates are horizontal. And this y coordinate is vertical. So what we're going to do here now is, uh, let's see, we can say here, well, let's do one thing. We have here the text and we have here the width. So what we want to do here now is getting the chart x coordinates while well, we can do this one like that. Let's remove this and say a constant, say x position will be equal to chart dot day of, uh, get data set meta index zero dot dot data index zero dot x. That's basically the one we need. And the x here. So once we did this, we can do the same for the y. Well, the y needs to be recalculated, of course. So what I'm going to do here now, we have here the x position, and then we have here the y position. So if I do this, save, refresh, we're getting it here. Now we have to push it up. So how do we push it up? Well, we have to deduct it, because the higher we go, the closer to the zero we are. So what I want to do is I want to go based on, uh, let's try the outer radius and see what happens. Save. All right, as you can see here, it's going almost out of the chart area. Let's do inner radius. There you are, and I have, let's make this after so we can see it clearly. So it will be on top of it. As you can see here, it just basically calculates just this point here. So that's fine, but I want to be in the center, and that's why we have the width here. So what we can do here is, we can even say the inner radius, and I have a width deduction, but the width will be basically the difference between the two. So I don't want that, but I want to do is minus width but the width must be divided by two so let's prioritize this first say refresh all right so now we're getting somewhere but you might say well hold on this is still in the center it is in the center but we need to uh, position it well so we say ctx at text align equals center so that's number one save that refresh all right and then another item is ctx dot and I guess this center should not be center, it should be right, by the way. Let's save that again. There we are. Then we're going to say here ctx dot text base line. And we're going to put this in the middle. So we represent, reposition in the very center. Save. There we are. So that looks quite nice. So now we have this. But what I want to do, of course, is we have to duplicate this three times. And I want to grab the color and or the value, whatever the value is. In this case, it's red, red, bl uh, whatever the label value would be. I guess in this case, it's just red. Or you can see a green, red, etc., etc. So let's grab that. How do we do this? We have here the data. So I'm just going to say here, I'll just make this very fast. Data, dot, data sets index zero dot uh, label. Save, refresh. All right. That works. What I do want is a little bit space more away from this. So what I'm going to say here, position, and then we deduct it with five pixels. So we go five pixels to the left. There we are. Now we have that. We have to loop through this. And then for this, I'm going to make a very basic for loop. But this for loop will cover all of these items here. So I'm going to say here, for, and then we have here is let i equals zero. And then we're going to say here, we're going to say loop through this i as long as, and then we have here, basically we need to get here the data, just calculate how many data sets we have, dot data sets dot length. All right. And then we say a semicolon i plus plus. So then we put this in here. We cut this out and maybe because of these items, they might be uh, converted into a let value. That's necessary. 
save this, refresh, all right. Now, let's try first by replacing everything with the letter I. So we have here the iteration, save that, refresh. All right, that looks really beautiful. Final item is getting the color. How do we get the color here? Um, I guess we can just get this one here. This fill indicates our color. I'm going to put it in here. And then here what I will do is I'll just change this to data dot data sets index I because we're going to loop through that. And then we say here, I guess background color. And I will just put it as an array because if I'm not mistaken, it is an array. As you can see, it's an array. So I say index zero of the background color. And there we have the result.